Dear learners and listeners, Namaskar. I am Dr. Shweta and today I am going to continue my discussion on Biological and Cultural Shaping of Mind and Behavior Part 3. As we all know in Part 1 and 2, we have described that how the mind works. The objectives of today's program are to describe the endocrine glands and their functions, emphasizing the secretion of gonads and ovary, explain the transmission of hereditary characteristics, describe the relationship between culture and gender role, as well as understand the nature of socialization and acculturation processes, focus on behavior in terms of gender identity. Let's start with the first objective, which is endocrine system. You must have heard about some diseases that are caused by high or low levels of hormones in the body. For example, diabetes is caused by low level of a hormone which is called insulin. Similarly, the level of another hormone that is thyroxine controls our behavior. Hormones are chemicals secreted directly into our bloodstreams. The hormones are secreted by endocrine glands. This system is a collection of ductless glands that controls various body functions. The endocrine glands secrete chemicals that send signals by releasing hormones directly into the bloodstream. Let us start with the pituitary gland first. The pituitary gland is reddish gray, about the size of a pea, located in the brain. It is referred to as master gland. Why? Because some of the hormones that it releases stimulate and regulate the hormonal action of other endocrine glands. The next is the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is located in the neck and it releases a hormone that controls metabolism. It also affects energy level and the mood. The adrenal gland is located above the kidney. It secretes adrenal and other hormones during emergency situation. The next gland is the pancreas. The pancreas is located near the stomach. It produces insulin that controls the blood sugar level. The gonads control the sexual development and sexual behavior. The male gonads that is the testes are located in the testicles. These glands produce the hormone which is known as testosterone. The female gonads that is the ovaries produce the hormone that is known as estrogen. In both sexes that is male as well as female these hormones not only control the sex drive but also regulate the development of secondary sex characteristics like beards in men and breasts in women. The androgens such as the testosterone are generally found at higher levels in males than in females while the oestrogens such as osteodiol are generally found at higher levels in females. However, it is important to understand that androgens are not male hormones nor oestrogens female hormones. Both classes are found in both sexes. This was all about how the endocrine system works and what hormones it releases and what is being controlled by different glands in the body. Now let us come to the next objective which is the genetic influences on behavior. As the name suggests, genetic influences is what we have inherited from our parents. We often talk about people inheriting certain characteristics. Like Nina has inherited her mother's blue eyes or Ashok has inherited his father's curly hair. We expect tall parents to have tall children. The inheritance of such characteristics is called heredity. The branch of biology that deals with how heredity works 
is called genetics. Behavioral genetics is the study of inheritance of behavioral characteristics. All living beings are unique as they differ from the members of other species. For example, cats differ from dogs and humans differ from animals. An organism's physical appearance and behavior varies from individual to individual. The former is known as genotype and the later are termed as phenotypes. Now what is this genotype and phenotype? Every individual's phenotype is the result of interaction between the environment and the genes that they have inherited. The physical development is in large part based upon the genes we inherit from our parents. It is largely believed that the genetic characteristics transmitted by genetic factors sets limits on the capability of the organisms. The present genetic theory is based upon the work of Grigory Mendel. He showed that characteristics of parents are passed on to their offsprings through genes. These genes might produce visible characteristics in the offsprings or might be carried for possible transmission to another generations. The children of one set of parents do not necessarily inherit all the same characteristics. The union of two cells, what are those two cells? The egg from the mother and the sperm from the father is the beginning of a new individual. These two cells, like all others, carry within them material that forms a definite number of rod-like units and those rod-like units are known as chromosomes. The chromosomes carry heredity factors or the genes. The cell nucleus that contains the chromosome is made up of deoxyribonucleic acid that is DNA in combination with the protein compound. Chromosomes are pairs and each chromosome contains 1000 or so genes that also occur in pairs. The process of inheritance is based upon the process in which the offspring receives one of each gene pair from each parent. Some genes are dominant genes and some are recessive genes. What are dominant and recessive genes? An individual with dominant gene for a particular characteristic displays that characteristic. Whether only one or both in the pair are dominant. In case of recessive gene, the characteristics associated with it does not show up unless both genes in the gene pair are recessive. Some characteristics are produced by a single gene or gene pair. Multi-factor inheritance involves the action of several genes. The scientists working in the area of genetic engineering are trying to find out the genetic code so as to manipulate the cell structure. One of the examples of this type of research is the phenomena of cloning. The research is basically aimed to solve the problem of genetically transmitted diseases or behavioral abnormalities. Moreover, through genetic manipulation, scientists are trying to control certain undesired behaviors and to facilitate the desired behavior. The genetic manipulation has so far been tested widely in plants and to some extent in animals as well. The human research on genetic manipulation is under strict control of ethical principles. Now let's move on to the next topic of today's discussion which is culture and behavior that is how our behavior gets influenced by the culture 
that we live in. Behavior of human beings become meaningful in their cultural context. In terms of shared meanings and practices, different cultures guide us in choosing our goals and conducting ourselves in various situations. The patterns of behavior found in different cultures emerge in the context of interaction of the people which are encoded in different forms. Various traditions, customs and cultural artifacts display these codes. They help to interpret and make sense of the behavior of people belonging to a given culture. Thus, a community may subscribe to certain beliefs and values. Let me, for your understanding, tell you an example that Asians are believed to have a collectivist culture, whereas the Western culture is known as the individualistic culture. As the name suggests, collectivist culture means considering about others as well. And the individualistic culture means taking decisions on their own. That is just the difference in which the Asians as well as the Western culture emerge. This was an example of the Eastern and Western culture that how the individual differ in these two cultures. When we were talking about that a community may subscribe to certain beliefs and values, we also should know that they may become part of the social consciousness of the people of that community. That is, those beliefs and values acquire the social consciousness of the people belonging to a particular community. When the existing natural things change with the human efforts may be known as cultural change. Culture is said to represent what is contributed by human beings. It has subjective as well as material aspects. Culture often transmits from one generation to the other generation. The subjective part of the culture involves the values, norms, roles, etc. The material part of the culture deals with the tools, sculptures and various artifacts. People are born in various cultures which provide a set of stimuli, languages and practices. It is through these aspects of culture that we are made what we are. The diversity in behavior noted in different societies is to a large extent attributed to the cultural diversity. This happens because culture selectively facilitates certain patterns of behaviors and requires its member to inculcate those patterns in them. Culture works two ways. That is, it provides opportunities as well as puts constraints on us. Depending on the particular eco-cultural context, various behavior patterns and skills are encouraged or discouraged. It is essential to know that human behavior is shaped by the biological potential as well as the environmental contributions. However, the two interact and jointly determine behavior in a culture which gives a specific shape or direction to behavior. For instance, a child grows in a family, gets formal education in school and plays with toys. A moment's reflection will make it clear that families, schools and toys vary across different cultural settings. An extended and a nuclear family puts different demands from the individual. Similarly, schools in metropolitan cities 
and remote villages differ in terms of the organization of classroom, interaction pattern and other inputs. The toys too differ in metro and remote villages. It may however be noted that cultures do not remain static because we are always changing. While each culture tries to maintain its identity, but it also interacts with other cultures and is influenced by them. Thus, there is both continuity that is maintaining what one has as well as change which is adapting the good or the bad things from other cultures. Now, let us come to the next objective of today's program which is the process of socialization and acculturation. Socialization is the process through which cultures are maintained and transmitted across generation. That is how do we come in contact with the people in our societies. Thus, agencies such as parents, media, school, peer group and the religious institutions deliberately shape children and people to develop specific behavior patterns. Why specific behavior patterns? Because that is the norm of that particular society. They make conscious and deliberate attempts to define expectations of the society. That is what is expected if you are in a particular society. The parents for instance adopt various styles of parenting which vary in the degree of affection and degree of control that is exercised on the children. It has been found that authoritarian and permissive parenting interferes with the healthy development of personality. Parents use reward and punishment to promote or discourage children's behavior. Children also learn by imitation and modeling the significant others. Imitation and modeling the significant others is that they observe and they try to adopt that behavior, for example, maybe of parents or teachers present in his or her environment. They also identify with others and internalize the characteristics of important persons that they observe around them. The role models play a very important role in shaping the behavior of growing children. Because we have already discussed that these children try to imitate the behavior of others around them. The process of acculturation deals with the influence of a new or different culture on a given culture. Thus, it characterizes the process of contact between the cultures. Such contacts take place under various conditions which include colonization, invasion, international trade, travel and migration. Indian society present a good example of acculturation. How? Because the British impact in language, dress and education in Indian culture is clearly noticeable. The process of acculturation demands people to learn many new things and socialize in different ways. Acculturation is often found quite stressful. Why? Because people respond to acculturative stress in different ways. They may assimilate with the new culture or maintain separate identity. Also, a new kind of integration may emerge which will involve the elements of old as well as new culture. In other situations, people may experience marginalization and separation 
if they are not ready to accept what the other culture gives to us. So this was all about today's program. But before I end up today's program, we would just conclude that what we have discussed in the biological and cultural shaping of mind and behavior part 1, part 2 and part 3. Let us have a revision of that. We talked about first of all that human behavior is an outcome of the interplay of evolution, heredity and environment. Evolution through natural selection leads to changes in the life of species. Human evolution is characterized by bipedalism, encephalization and development of language. The functioning of our body and brain with the help of our brain itself. We receive sensations through our senses and react by the actions of our muscles and glands. Both sensation and control of our action is mediated by our brain. Every organism including human being is made up of small units that are called cells. These cells constitute the basic unit of life. The nervous system is made up of neurons. Sensory neurons carry information from sense organs to the central nervous system. Motor neurons carry command from the brain to the glands and muscles of the body. All the neurons that are there have cell body, dendrite which is the branch like extensions and the exons that carry information to other neurons. Synapses are junctions between exons of one neuron and the dendrites of the other neurons. The nervous system consists of CNS which is central nervous system and central nervous system is made up of brain and spinal cord. And we also talked about the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is further divided into somatic and autonomic nervous system. Somatic system is responsible for receiving information through sensory receptors and for our actions through the glands and muscles. The autonomic nervous system consisting of the sympathetic and parasympathetic parts acts to mobilize in response to threats and then for returning the body to the normal state. We also talked about the cerebral cortex that it has four lobes, the frontal lobe, the occipital lobe, the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe. The occipital lobe is specialized for vision. The parietal lobe is involved in the sense of touch and sensation from own body. The function of the frontal lobe include coordination of movement, planning, attention and social skills etc. The temporal lobe is important in audition and language. The right and the left cerebral hemispheres are specialized for various higher order functions. And today we talked about the endocrine system which is a collection of ductless glands that control various bodily functions through the secretion of hormones. We also talked about genetics that is the study of traits are inherited or passed on from parents to the offsprings. Study in genetics suggests that a substantial portion of variation among individuals on many psychological attributes such as intelligence and personality are heritable. Human behavior can be meaningfully understood in a cultural context. Culture consists of the man-made part of the environment. It has subjective and material aspects. Cultures represent 
meanings and practices which are transmitted from one generation to the other generation. Culture do not remain static because we have already discussed that they keep on changing. They are maintained through the process of socialization. The parents, peers and schools etc. acts as the agents of socialization. The contact with other culture leads to the process of acculturation. The contact may lead to assimilation, isolation or integration in relation to the culture in contact. This was all for today's program. Thank you.